Yeah, would you stand please, uh, turn to Luke chapter 6 tonight. Luke 6, six it's good to be back. Anybody getting a little cagey or cabin fever? Huh? It's good to be here. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Luke chapter 6, we are looking at a portion from verse 20, 20 to verse 38. Yes, chapter 6, Luke 6, 20 to verse 38. <clears throat> it's a lot of verses, and there's a principle here. Remember that message on I, in Micah, what does the Lord require of you but to, say, say it with me, but to do justly, justly, yes, mercy, and then humbly, right? So justly, okay, mercy. Look at one similar list, Matthew 23. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. <clears throat> Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithes of mint and anise. What are, what are those words mean, mint and anise? Yeah, they're spices or herbs. And come in and have omitted... So they would pay tithes on even their, their, their food, and they would even pay tithes on that. And then they have omitted the weightier matters. Now we want to really hear what does Jesus say are the weightier matters, right? It, it kind of sets you up like in my heart. Okay, what is really important to Jesus, right? That's what this says here. Verse 23, the weightier matters of the law, and read them to me. Judgment, mercy, and faith. So there's a similarity between these two lists. Oh, you probably can't read my writing, but there is. Okay, it's not up there? Okay, yeah, with the, with the snow coming down through. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now, uh, what is, what is judgment? Turn to, uh, I'm going to have you sit in a minute, turn to Deuteronomy, and verse 22, chapter 22, Deuteronomy 22, in verse 1. Read it with me once you get there. Ready? <clears throat> Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray and hide yourself from them. Oh, this is fun. Okay, you hide yourself from them. They shall in any case bring them again unto your brother. Okay. Verse 2. If thy brother be not nigh unto thee, or if you know him not, then thou shalt bring it unto thine own house. It shall be with thee until thy brother seek after it. You shall restore it again to, his, uh, to him again. The ox or the sheep, you see them go astray, but you say, I don't see that, and you go off. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. And the, and the law says, no, you're to take them, bring them to your house, and keep them until your brother is, you find the brother that owns them. Okay, you may be seated. <clears throat> well, tonight we're going to speak about mercy and grace, justice, mercy and grace, and, and read those verses. But before we do, I want to set your minds into what it is that we're talking about. <clears throat> Have you ever been in the winter and somebody lost their glove in the snow and what do you do when you find that glove? 
just step on it, walk past it, <laughs> bring it to the police station, <laughs> ask them to file it, bring it to the lost and found, or put it up on a, at a bus stop. I've seen that in Finland where there's one glove hanging there. Well, why is this important? Because in Romans 2, 14, it is written in our heart what is right. One funny story, I was in northern Finland. <laughs> at, <laughs> I was in, at a medical school teaching a Bible study every week, and, and these, you know, people, these students that are serious and um, great people, and they would really dedicate hours to the Bible study, and they had their, their workload to study medicine, but they did this, and we spent the day, and at the end of one of those studies, we went out, it was dark, and winter time, and the snow was wet, like now, and I just made a snowball. I saw a sign, so I just, you know, wanted to throw a snowball at the sign. Well, it, it w was launched in a totally wrong trajectory, <laughs> and it went through a window. <clears throat> so I, I just started to run, okay, because that's like in my background. Okay. But as I took a couple of strides, you know, I realized, okay, I'm a pastor. <laughs> These are my disciples. I don't see any of them around me. I stop, look back. They're there, standing there. <laughs> you know, and I, I walk back sheepishly to that group, and you know, we, we must go there now. So, so, so we go to the end of the apartment building and we knock on the door and explain, I, you know, we apologize. Okay. Uh, what does this mean? <laughs> I guess it's just confession night. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Should I say more? <laughs> okay. Um, the Finns are amazing in this, like, number one point. They, they, really, they really feel it. We're at the crossing the street at 3 o'clock in the morning, and the little red man is there at the street light, and we're standing there, you know. There's not a car within 100 miles. You know, we, we must wait until it's... <laughs> okay. So, we're, you know, it's like totally wrong to rock, walk across, but it's... Okay. Uh, this is the law. This is the law. And Jesus said it is a weighty matter. It's really a part of our life. It's very important that what is written in our hearts and, and then, of course, how much we break it. But even if I break it, it is still a part of my, my life. But we are born again, and there is good news for us. He fulfilled it, Matthew 5, 17. He understands the deeper aspects of it. And why would I hang a glove up at the bus stop? Because of love. There's somebody with one glove. And I love them. And I care about them. And I, I take that glove. That's the idea. Or why do I confess my error at the house and be thrown a snowball through a third floor window, but they have a problem now, 
and we love our neighbor. It's written here, and it is clear to us. But if we lived in a world that was only this way, how much guilt, how, how much, um, how, how empty, um, how many disappointments there are, how much failure there is in the lives of people. So in these three words, let's say just, justly or judgment is what, what you get, what you deserve. Okay. This is the meaning of law, justice, what you deserve. Then when Christ was on the cross, there was justice there in this sense that his, our sins were on him. When he was, actually these three words go with the cross. I want to show it to you here in a minute. Justice was on the cross. Where, where God judged our sin. These three weighty things are on the cross. That our sin is judged there. We have been found guilty of all the law in James 2 and verse 10. God loves judgment, loves justice. We get what we deserve. Christ got what we deserve. And so that's the first thing. The second one is mercy means we don't get what we deserve. Do not get what you deserve, right? There's a penalty for what you did. But God gives me mercy, and I do not get it. I deserve uh, death, but Christ got the death. I've got life. Well, just the fact, just in neutral, it's mercy. I don't get the, I don't get the judgment. I get the mercy. But then there is even, even more, and it is justice, mercy, and here I'll put here humbly, and I'll put the word grace here. This means at the cross, we got a resurrection. We deserve judgment. We didn't get it. We have been forgiven, but we've been given more. Our name is in heaven. We have a new life. We have a new heart. We're born of the Spirit. God's mind is our mind. We've been given grace. Well, this list here, judgment, mercy, and faith. But I know that in, we know that in our New Testament, grace and faith, they go together. Just to say that now we live by faith and we realize in our new ourselves this depth of acceptance. We are accepted unconditionally. We are given much more than we have ever could imagine. So now I'll turn to Luke 6 with me, please. In verse, there's one sentence here that I think is pretty awesome that I wanted to read to you. <clears throat> Christianity is not a religion but an announcement of the end of religion. This is a good statement. Christianity is not a religion, but an announcement of the end of religion. Religion is usually here in the area of judgment. This is where really a lot of religion is. You know, what have we done wrong? How wrong we are? How we have failed? and then what we should do about it, how we should operate. But Christianity is actually the announcement of it's over. It's all been taken care of. We have been judged by Christ, been given mercy, and then been given grace. So we have received what we don't deserve. Mercy is not receiving what we deserve. Okay. Turn now to Luke 6. 20. And he lifted up his eyes 
on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. This really is the, what we just have been speaking about, is the background for this new way, this very unusual way of thinking and living, this new mind where we are, we are not, we say it often, not worldly, but we, we are understanding by God's grace something that has promoted us, has enlightened us. We have an understanding of life in a new way. This is the, the ministry of Christ was that you have lost the weighty matters, but I bring into you the weighty things, and the re end result is that you are actually different. We have been changed so much so that these blesseds in verse 20, 20, 21, 22, these are important for us. Because of time, and I want to kind of go through this but not running through it, but I want you to see 22. They shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast you out. Your name is evil. When I read that uh, today, and just it kind of got a hold of me in my heart, they will separate you from their company. Um, the change is so deep, the change is so real, that it affects our life in a kind of relaxed way. There's love that we have now. There's, we are fervent, but in another way, we are like contagious. Like our faith sometimes radically affects people. And our forgiveness radically affects people. And it's important that we would have a radical sense in our own hearts of who we are, our identity. Well, we have some people in our church here who have had, well, we've all had radical change, but some have um, come from the street. Uh, some have grown up in of dysfunctional families, some have been orphaned, uh, some are, have been in jail, and, and so on, and we don't ever talk about people in those terms specifically, but we know that this is the weightier matters is when mercy, judgment is there, but it is on Christ, mercy comes to us, and then more, Grace. Grace is that new identity that I have that's kind of resonates in my spirit. And I go, wow, it really is awesome and true. And then people separate us from their company. I asked Pastor Steve to go to and do a little research on this. And he brought up uh, a couple names. Chris Pratt, was it? An actor in Hollywood. Well, he was he was like very very much in demand. I'm not sure if I'm getting all this right. Then there was Kevin Sorbo. Tim Tebow is the third one. Why don't you just say a word? Because I'm going to get it all mixed up. Just a few words about it. About which one? Oh well, the principal. The they were Tim Tebow. I'll, I'll Tim lead Tebow. him in. It. Tim, Tim Tebow, football quarterback, very affected. T Boeing in the in the end zone, okay, became a popular phrase. Some guy in the grandstand named it T Boeing. It went across, you know, 
and then his history we know a little bit, but has anybody separated them from his company? Well, he had a girlfriend who was Miss USA, and he said that we're not sleeping together till we're married, because that's my conviction as my faith, and she separated herself from him. Hmm, interesting story. I'm glad I went to church tonight <laughs> to hear that story. Let me repeat it. He had a girlfriend, Miss USA, with, she wants to sleep with him before getting married. He goes, no, not going to happen. So she says, goodbye, bye-bye. I separate from your company. I'm not part of that. That's not when I don't even know who she is, and I'm not, maybe I'm putting words in her mouth, but I'm doing it to illustrate the message. Sorry to whoever she is. Okay, second case, an actor in Hollywood. Um, you remember the, uh, you wouldn't, you didn't see this movie, Pastor Schaller, but a lot of us did. Rush Hour, it had Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. It was hilarious, and Chris Tucker was like, hilarious. Uh, but then, we haven't seen Chris for a while, because Chris Tucker decided to become a Christian and now won't play certain parts that involve some of the language that he used to use in the movies. So, we haven't seen him. Oh, there's a little rumbling here in the audience. Yeah, I didn't know you went to movies. Okay, listen. Has it ever happened to you? Has it, like, the little group kind of realized you walk into the room and there's some little something going on, and it doesn't bother you so much because you know you are, there's something in deeper in you. And that is what... The weightier matters, these are important to Christ. The weightier matters, judgment, and I, he takes that, and then he gives mercy, and then he gives abundant grace. And this identity of being accepted, being loved, and it really has an effect on our hearts and our values. Look at the next text here. Thanks, Pastor. Do you want to throw in one more? Okay, he's done. Okay, look at verse 20, 22. They will cast your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Isn't it amazing how that works? You're the bad guy. Verse 23. I wonder if uh, the football player, NFL quarterback, runs into the end zone. Instead of T-bowing, he does some Hindu thing or Islamic thing, then what is the press going to say about it? Oh, the guy's a hero. But you, you bring Christ into life, that's interesting. And we're not persecuted uh, people, uh, what's the word? We're not uh, conscious of it that way. I just want to read the scripture. Verse 23, rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for you shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. You have to check your Christianity. And I say, what am I looking for? What do I want? What am I looking for? Because, to be honest, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 9, Paul said to the Corinthians, you are full, you are rich, you are like kings without us, but for us we are the offscoring of the earth. You are wise. There is a professionalism in Christianity that is popular. I might say, well, you are educated, you are entertainers, you are polished, you have your programs, and so on. And it's like, okay, fine, but is there also that, that, uh, that spirit of, you know, I don't care about that. That's not that important to me. 
I'm not caring about that. I don't care about what people say or think of me that way. That's not that important to me. And the Lord is saying, uh, congratulations. Um, that's where I'm at. I want you to walk with me this way. And, and now comes, verse 27, some real good stuff here. But I say to you, which here love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. An atheist, Bertrand Russell, said, what the world needs, and he said this, I'm ashamed to say, is Christian love. What the world needs, and I'm ashamed to say it, is Christian love. It is amazing when in our hearts we really care, you know, not the glove that fell in the snow and you hope that the person will find it, but, but more deeply, an enemy is yeah, somebody who totally misunderstands you or me. Maybe even your dad or your mom or your sister or your brother that you grew up with and they have really treated you in a mean way. Maybe even somebody in the church that has abused your, your, your uh, something in your relationship or there's something that bugs you or bothers you or they have stolen from you or hurt you. Well, verse 27, love your enemies. But look up in the, on the screen here. Enemy, judgment, that's what I would say. Judge the enemy. And Jesus said, yeah, there is judgment. If they are an enemy, they are an enemy. If they've hurt you, they've hurt you. We're not hiding it. We're not sweeping it under the carpet. We're recognizing it for what it is, but we're also, we're also in the, interested in the weightier matters. And what does mercy mean? They don't get what they deserve. And then what does grace mean? They even get more. They get more. They don't get what they deserve. That's mercy. And they get what they don't deserve. They get, you know, it goes like this. State trooper pulls me over. I'm speeding. He says, you've been speeding. You were speeding. I've watched you for 42 days. <laughs> no. I, I, you are speeding. Okay. Yes, I am. I, I, yes, that, yes. Okay. He goes back to his car. My prayer life improves. <laughs> Comes back to the car. He says, you can go. You're free. Oh, I can't even believe it. That's mercy. That is mercy. He gave me mercy. Not judgment. He gave me mercy. And I hope the state of Maryland doesn't find out about it and he loses his job. Because his job is not to give mercy. His job is to bring judgment. Okay. Yeah, so I, I start the car. He goes, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got something more for you. Pulls out of his pocket a $100 bill. He said, I want you and your wife to have a nice evening together. I go, what? 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 what, what? <laughs> Amazing. That's grace. That's grace. You see, Jesus died and we were judged and said, you're free, that's mercy. But then he added more to it. And he was raised from the dead and he said, you are raised from the dead and seated in heaven. And your name is there and I am for you and I give you this new life. Now I leave you in the earth and I want you to express this. Live in the weightier matters. I want you to grow in it, discover me in it. Isn't that amazing? Look at verse 28. Bless them that curse you. Just have fun doing it. He cursed. Bless him and bless him and bless him and bless all my enemies that are cursing me. What a spirit. Is that God's spirit? Is that different? Listen, human animals kill Human beings, they judge. Christians, they give mercy and grace. 
they learn it. The Spirit of God is in it. Learn to do it. It's hard. I mean, I don't think it's automatic. It may be. I don't think it's necessarily easy, but it is a whole way of thinking. It's a whole way of living. It is in harmony with the nature of God. But then you say, yeah, but it's not right. I know. This is the point number one. It isn't right. What is right is judgment. I realize that Jesus is behind you. He agrees. Judgment is important. That's a weighty matter. That's an important element of life. That's for sure. That's the law. But the law could not produce God. The law could not bring in something shocking, amazing, startling, awesome. I have here a Let's see, Max Lucado said, how long has it been since your gen generosity stunned someone? Huh? Has anybody here, I mean, I suppose somebody here went to a, a, a driveway and uh, walked up the driveway through the deep snow and said, I, I'm going to shovel your driveway. And they said, no, I can't afford it. And you said, it doesn't cost anything. Did I do that? No, but I thought about it. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, this, is, this did happen. My wife and I went for a walk. This woman was so frustrated. Her car was invisible under the mound of snow. She was like almost weeping. I said, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you 10 minutes because we're walking and I, I can help you a little bit. So she said, no, nah, I don't, need, don't even take your 10 minutes and take a hike. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what she meant. Anyway, okay, so, so I took a shovel or two and she saw how it was going. She said, ah, forget it. Took the shovel. <laughs> so I hadn't, you know, does that count? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me read the quote again. How long has it been since your generosity stunned someone? That you love me? That you're giving this to me? That you care about me? Isn't that beautiful? Let's go to the next verse. <clears throat> Chapter 6, verse 29. And unto him that smites you on the one cheek, offer also the other. How can it be? And him that takes away your cloak, forbid not to take the coat also. I think the only way we could get close to this is to read it and think about it and see how far away we are from that and then know who we are and how we are able to live a unique life, a new life, where we're able to, you know, live in this kind of, of love. Verse 30, give to every man that asks of you, and of him that takes away your goods, ask them not again. And as you would that men should do to you, do you also to them likewise. For if you love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. You know, in those societies and circles, of course, there is love, and they love because they are loved and they've known each other for years. But what about going outside of my circle, loving those that are outside of my circle? What about ministering grace to people outside of our circles, outside people we don't know or people that are outside and in trouble? There is something contagious about you and the spirit you have, the love you have, and the faith that you have. That's a weightier matter, our faith. And then 30, uh, did we do 33? And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have you for sinners also do even the same? And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have you for sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again? 
Love your enemies, do good, lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great. Where will the reward come from? Where will the reward come from? God. I believe, I, he doesn't say, does he say it? Let's see. Your reward shall be great. You shall be the children of the highest for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Haven't we seen this in our lives? Christian people, we don't even know who they are. And we see these expressions of grace and love and God rewarding us, enlarging our hearts, enlarging our horizons by this great grace. Why wouldn't, if God gave us grace, why wouldn't we be giving it out? If, people, if God has loved us and given to us, why wouldn't we be living in faith and giving out and ministering that great grace? Yeah, we may get into some people will... But no, it's, it's our joy and our reward is great. And then 36, be therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, you shall not be judged. Condemn not, you shall not be condemned. Forgive, you shall be forgiven. Give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, it shall be measured to you again. I don't know. It seems that when this is going on, it's like a measurement, and then it is returned. We have that spirit, and then there is that blessing because of walking this way with God. Okay, would you pray with me, please? <clears throat> In loving your neighbor, it's the small gestures that make the biggest impact. It's the small things at the cafe or in the street it's the small things. Wait, just one second. Look up here for a second. Somebody told me a couple of stories are sweet. Pastor Jason, you did, didn't you? This morning. Do you remember one of them? <laughs> okay, baby. All right. This, ah, they were amazing, too. Just one of those stories. Who told me? What was it about? You can't remember? Weren't, wasn't it you? What? No, somebody met one of our people somewhere. Who was with me today? What? Oh, Pastor Barry, was it you? Okay, tell me. Just a few words and I'll remember. Yeah, he was shoveling snow, I met a lady, and she said, um, you had, your church had Christmas carolers go through our neighborhood. And then what did she say? That the people that came to my door were amazing and they represented your community so well and and then what yes and there was another one wasn't there that one <laughs> go ahead Well, that was at the Towson Mall, the yeah, Towson Mall, and a good report. You don't know me. I know you. I've been watching you. <laughs> and didn't, didn't he say, I've heard you preach or something? I've heard you preach, and I've heard others preach in your church, and I am interested to send my kids to your school. 
Uh, would, it, would it, you know, it's the small things with our neighbors and people we meet. It's our hearts that speak to people. It, we are not afraid of what it is that we have received we, and how people understand us. It's not a problem to us. We love and we just love because it comes out of our hearts and this is where we are living uh, this new you know self-image okay would you pray with me again oh there's another story <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> okay <laughs> okay <laughs> okay Lord, thank you for this time tonight and these people and this moving of your spirit amongst us. Thank you. The love that is in our hearts, what it means, the weightier matters, the real issues in our lives. We fail, but grace is greater than our sin. We are unable, but God, the image, the new self grace it it humbles us but doesn't degrade us and it exalts us but doesn't puff us up it's so healthy it humbles us and then promotes us but without our ego thank you lord for that if you're here tonight and you don't have jesus now's the time not later now's the time don't put it off come boldly Learn of him. He is meek and lowly. He will save you, take your sin away, give you a new life in him. Then grow in him. Walk by faith in him and trust him in every area of your life. Learn to pray. He will answer. Learn to trust him. He will support you, encourage you, speak to you, and lead you. Raise your hand. If